Hey guys, welcome back to another Spigot adventure. My name is Tommy and behind me is my E36 M3. So it's been a while since you guys probably have seen this car on the channel. I still have it. I just actually drive it a lot, but I've done a lot of maintenance and replacing parts in there uh, off the camera. I just didn't really film. Uh, but today we are working on something that's a little more exciting. And I think it's a, uh, worth filming. Look at that, this third gear, but look at the amount of play. So to address that, I have actually collected um, the whole shifter uh, refresh kit um, that we replace every single bushings. I'm also going to be doing a little upgrade. So got this uh, Rogue Engineering. Um, I think this is probably OG version of the Rogue Engineering, but it's brand new. Um, then I'm going to be upgrading, but also a AKG DSSR. Um, off camera, I've actually kind of gone ahead and put this together just to make sure it fits. I did have to make a small modification, so I had to actually sand down the um, selected joint um, because it was a little too big to fit into the uh, DSSR. Uh, but once I got that sanded, it, it fits okay now. It's very, very tight fitting. Uh, but on this side, for the Rogue Engineering, um, I actually had to add two spacers. I dropped the whole exhaust from front all the way to the back as a whole unit. Um, I also removed the hit shield uh, down there. And I used the hook. So... Imagine you can you hook it from the front and do it like that. It was pretty easy. I got the stock shifter out along with the carrier um, as well as the stock um, selector rod. And look at the amount of play. You can hear the noise too. I'll be upgrading the, from the stock selector rod to a DSSR. Um, here's a quick comparison. Uh, the stock one, uh, it's only coming out from one side versus the upgraded one. It's um, attachment points on both sides. So this will probably be less play, more secured, and more feel because uh, this is uh, a little heftier compared to the, the stock one. If you also look at the the selector joint that I removed from the car, um, pay attention to the inside. Um, there's supposed to be a piece of foam. And uh, yeah, I think it's completely disintegrated. It's probably over the years wear and tear and the fluid contamination that kind of just dissolved the foam or the sponge, I believe. And if you look at the new one, if you look at the foam right here, nice and fresh, and that probably gets rid of a lot of the play that we experience with the, the shifter. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Rogue Engineering shifter versus the stock shifter. I actually adjust the pivot ball, uh, longest throw setting to the shortest throw setting. What I've done is I actually lined up the top where the shift knob sits um, and see it lines up here uh, with the ball here but you notice that the pivot point it's a lot uh, greater on the new shifter versus the, short, uh, the old shifter and this longer uh, distance measuring from the ball to the uh, to the connection point down here will give you a shorter throw versus the stock shifter will give you the longer throw. The way I adjusted it is there are just two um, C-clip, top and bottom, uh, you can see. And I just removed the C-clip and moved the ball up. Um, I noticed they actually put some super glue um, to glue the ball. So I that's what I've done too. I actually use some super glue so this thing doesn't spin around and it's uh, pretty secure right now. 
I also went ahead and cleaned up the carrier. I had also removed the old bushings. Um, and see this piece that I took out? I just used a long screwdriver and just pry it out. It came out pretty easily. Um, and this is the one I'll be replacing with. It's a uh, Delrin. Back underneath the car, I went ahead and put in the new shifter seal. Um, so I was trying to get the old one out and use a pick, kind of disintegrated it, but I couldn't really get it out. So what I ended up doing is I just put on the new seal and just tap it in. So now I have the old seal on the inside and the new seal on the outside. But <laughs> this thing is probably one of the hardest or tedious thing I've ever installed onto a car. So um in in order to get the pin in successfully you see that circle thing down there um that pin has to go through the joint but also like there's a little uh ball joint thingy that comes out comes out from the uh shifter uh from the transmission so what i ended up doing is i use a hook um from the top hole uh, so I can align the holes together uh, but also so I can feed the pin uh, from the bottom uh, and then after I kind of get it aligned I use one of these uh, I think I would call it like a channel lock um, channel lock to basically clamp the, the pin all the way through uh, the selector joint. Um, I still ran into an issue, the pin didn't want to go all the way through. I ended up using a freaking uh, air hammer uh, to get the remainder of the pin all the way in so this uh, C-clip can uh, successfully you know secure the pin so they don't it doesn't fall out. I don't even think it will fall out. The fact that I have to use an air hammer to get it in um, tells you i don't think that would go anywhere but that clip is just for safety on the other end i also installed the carrier bushing this thing wasn't too hard to do i pulled the old one out uh, and popped the new one in uh, the only thing i had to do was to use a jack and a piece of wood to help you know pop it into um, the chassis uh, you see there's probably like there's like a slot in the bushing on the side um, and you just have to like make sure it clips onto the, the chassis um, and then after that I install the carrier onto uh, and install that clip on the top that thing was really hard to do what I ended up doing is I just really pull the, the clamp uh, apart so it facilitated to the clip uh, to just clip in. Uh, I ended up pulling the shifter apart again and adjust the, adjusted the pivot from the shortest row setting down one notch um, because uh, when I had it at the shortest row setting, um, the bottom of this part was making contact with the dry shaft. Um, so I think it's in second and fourth gear. So I ended up moving this ball a little bit uh, down, one notch down, and this essentially raised the bottom of this part up, the whole shifter up. I found some pictures, reference picture online with the compared to the Z3M shifter, and I don't think they have a clearance issue. Uh, the distance from the center of the ball to the center of the joint it was about 56 millimeter. Uh, in my case, uh, it is about 54-ish uh, millimeter. Also install a new flex disc the Guibo. Um everything torque to spec to 85, 86 per pound and I also paint marked the bolts. 
I decided to wait until the next time uh, to do the uh, center bearing because this one is still in pretty decent shape and there's no noise and it still spins pretty smoothly. Got the car all back together. Feels very good. It's a lot better. You have to actually really wiggle it in order, in order to feel the slop. It's a lot tighter than before. There's definitely more MVH with the poly care bushing from the Turner Motorsports like rebuild kit. Um, you'll hear a lot more of the transmission noise or the drivetrain noise. So after taking it out for a test drive, um, the new shifter, the shifts are a lot better than before. Um, they, each shift, it's a lot more precise. You know which gear, gear you're in. The play, after you put in gear, before was really bad. Now, it's almost gone. I would say this is a really worthwhile upgrade, although it did take me a long time to get everything done. And some of it was a pain in the butt to do. But I still think it's really worth it. If you guys have any questions about the shifter as well as the installation, make sure to drop them in the comment section. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and follow us for more Speggy Adventure. Bye!